Hi everyone, welcome to Tony Fox Tarot. Thanks for joining me today. Great to have you with me. Today we're looking at what's happening in love. What's happening next? When are you going to meet somebody? Who's that person going to be? A breakdown of their character, an understanding of who they are, how they work, how you'll meet them, and when it will be. So lots to get through. And before we get started, if you want to go down below and hit subscribe, tap on the bell icon, that'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. Please like and share this video where you can. And if you're interested in the services that I offer as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. Plenty of information about who it is that I am, what is that I do, and how it is you can access my service as a psychic tarot reader. Now, before you on the screen, we've got four different cards to choose from. And the idea is to choose a card that comes through for you really strongly. Once you've made that choice, that will be your reading. And it's perfectly fine to choose more than one card if it comes through really strongly for you. Just remember, this is a general reading, so take what resonates and leave behind anything that doesn't. Now we've got card one, card two, card three, or card four. Taking a moment to be with the cards, drawing in a nice deep breath, and as you release the breath, listening to your intuition, your inner voice, the energy of the cards. Which of these comes through for you the strongest? Is it card one, card two, card three, or card four? Down below, there are four different time sets representing each of these different cards. If you'd like to go to the one you've chosen, I'll see you in a moment. Hi everyone, welcome to card number one. This is your reading and we're looking at what's next in love. So let's jump in and have a look and see what's going on. And I'm going to start over here with the lovers and the knight of swords and I'm looking to the past. I felt that there was a past relationship here that had a really difficult dynamic. I just want to say one thing first before we start. I don't feel like you've ever been short of interest in terms of people wanting to pursue you or to perhaps even yeah to be in love with you I, I kind of in some ways I kind of feel like you've had to fight people off you know may, may, and maybe you haven't been ready for love maybe you haven't been ready to be with somebody that this is not a decision or a choice that you've actually wanted to make um that actually puts you in to the picture or or into a relationship really that that kind of ties you down um I get a very strong energy coming through with you. I, I kind of feel like there's a real warrior energy here. I feel like you're quite feisty. I think you're quite verbal too. I think you've got a lot to say and you shoot straight from the hip. So you tell people how you see it. Um, yeah, I, I get kind of big personality coming through here. I feel, I feel like, I don't feel like you're like a, you know, like a wallflower, you know, you're not sort of withering away in the corner. It's like, you know, you've, you've got quite, quite a lot of energy. I think people notice you, you stand out in the crowd. People, um, yeah, and, and I think, and I think I feel here that there has been a past relationship or there's been struggle with the idea of a relationship, you know, and if, if there was a relationship, it's a difficult dynamic with maybe lots of fighting, lots of issues that have come up, maybe even quite aggressive at times, you know, maybe this has been a really charged, passionate relationship. Um, and, I, and I think I feel that you are very charged. I think you are very passionate. There's a sense of this idea of, of, of when I get close to love, you know, I have to fight it because it can be kind of overbearing. It can be overwhelming. There's a sense that love can be a bit intimidating, perhaps. Um, and also not wanting to maybe get lost in a relationship, you know, um, I, I feel that it's this, yeah, it's a really strong feeling of not being ready for it. And I, again, I don't feel that you've been short of offer, like an offer to be in a relationship. I feel that other people have pursued you to to want to be with you. Um, so, so, so love has definitely been skirting around you in a way where I think it's actually been very central to your life. But at the same time, I think when it gets too close, I think you flip it back on the other person in a way where you can be quite um, intimidating or maybe even demanding in a way that, that, that I don't want to say off-putting because I think actually it's a tactic. I think that you're testing them out to see whether they can handle you, whether they 
really want to be with you, but also whether they can accept you for who it is that you are, maybe is, is what I'm feeling. Because you, you've got this big personality that needs a lot of space, a lot of time to to do its thing, really. Um, and, and, I, and I feel like, you know, having to be in some, hmm, I guess, you know, I almost like, I, I, I want to sort of say idealistic, you know, relationship is, is, I don't know that that's actually you. I don't know that you want to fit into that pigeonhole that you don't necessarily want to be that person or that couple. So I'm saying a lot here. I feel warrior energy here. I feel a very strong person who has quite a lot of fight in them. Um, I, I, I think the thing is, is, is also, I think what I feel strongly here is is, is, is is being listened to or being heard is actually really important to you. And, and so again, you know, being in a relationship, not wanting to have your voice drowned out, you know, to become one, you know, to become the couple, to become me and them in a way that sort of defines two people as opposed to, you know, your uniqueness, you know, your individuality. So... I feel very much as a, a starting point that you've been fighting the idea of love. But I did feel also for some of you that there was definitely a relationship here that maybe hasn't got along so well and that's had a very difficult dynamic and there has been a lot of fighting. And I think if you come here to death and the eight of swords, I, feel, I, feel, I just feel, I feel at the moment your, your standing point or your, your, rest, your resting point is very much on, on this idea of not trusting the idea of, of being in love with somebody. Um, feeling a, a, a bit lost in a way where perhaps you're never going to find the person who gets you or very, you, you're not going to find a relationship where you can actually trust to open up and be yourself but not get lost in that relationship in a way where um, it sort of cancels you out, if that makes sense. Yeah, the idea, the idea at the moment, you know, is, is very much an unenjoyable feeling of, of, of what love's all about. You know, I, I don't feel at any point have you actually stopped to, to kind of really absorb what love is about from a more joyful point of view. You know, it seems like it's a bit of a chore. It's a fight. It's a struggle in your mind. Um, and, and so your mind's very fixed on the negative. I, I felt for some of you that there was definitely this idea of coming out of a relationship, death, and the eight of... Sword, you know, the, the, the feeling that you're, it's a very raw feeling. You know, I, I kind of feel like you're reeling from a situation with another person as though it's just happened. Maybe that happened a long time ago, but maybe you're just kind of like reliving it in your mind and it sort of freshens it up like it just happened like a minute ago. You know, and it just kind of leaves you feeling, oh, like I'm straight back there again. So, so it kind of freshens it up and then it just reinforces the pain involved with your views on, on, on relationships. I feel like you're very much out of your body in this experience, in, in terms of its totality. I, I, I don't feel at any point, have you really settled down and just kind of been with it and just accepted the moment and made peace with yourself in a way where you just open up and let them in, whoever that's gonna be. I think, I think you have some strong boundaries. I think you actually have a big personality. I think you use that to push people back not just relationships of the intimate variety, perhaps that's actually like with other people as well. I think you like to have the upper hand. And I think what I feel here with death and the eight of swords, I feel like you are worried that, you know, being in a relationship will, will lead to, to, to feeling like you're being overwhelmed, overpowered, maybe manipulated or controlled or vulnerable, maybe vulnerable, you know, um, I feel that, you know, that's that's actually very, that's, that's very strong here. But I feel at this point, it's like you're giving up on the idea of being in a relationship. Um, still recovering from perhaps what's happened before in another relationship or the ideas of, of, of what you think relationships are all about. Um, but yeah, I feel isolated, I feel alone here. You know, I feel, I feel lonely, actually. I feel lonely in a way where... I'm caught in my caught up in my head about it. I can't really settle into a space where I feel comfortable to just you know feel more emotional and physical about what's going on. I need to, I need 
I need to kind of, you know, keep my boundaries really tight. I need to keep guarded. I need to push people back because I don't want to let them in because I don't want to be overpowered. I don't want to be manipulated, controlled. I need to be heard. I need to be, and I've got something to say and I want you to hear it. And I'm really worried that you're not going to respond back in a way that allows me to be myself. I don't want to lose my individuality within a, within a relationship. But at the same time, because I'm not in a relationship, I don't, I don't feel like I have support. I don't feel love. I can't feel it. I can't find it. And, and it, so it starts as this, this worrying process. Am I ever going to find somebody who gets me? Am I ever going to find somebody who cares? Am I ever going to find somebody? Like, is it out there? And at the moment, I think you're just thinking, oh, God, it's just like, it's, it's, not, it's not there for me. You know, like, it's, I, I don't know that it's ever going to happen. I don't know if I can get beyond my own process to allow this to, you know. And, and, and I think because you become so in your head about it and you've gone around in circles with it, that it's like... You've kind of you've kind of lost your bearings. It's like oh, I just can't you know like I just can't find the center point, just to rebalance to to calibrate in a way that sort of puts my settings back to, to where they started, so that I can begin the process. It's like you've gone you're going a bit sort of haywire with it, you know, in a way. Um, lots lots going on here, and I think that the idea here is is that you know you know we need to get this back to a point where you know the idea of love becomes an enjoyable, inspirational proposition um that you feel from your physical self from your emotional self from your spiritual self that has some truth in it that resonates with you in a way where it's all possible you know because you become so divorced from it in your mind it's 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 like it's i think it's a fight within yourself you know because a lot of feisty feisty energy going on here there's a you know real warrior energy that wants to just you know punch it all out and and kind of you know get through it it's you know like so i, I kind of feel you know you're, you're keeping a lot of this down pushing it all down you know there is somebody out there though i mean the, the reality is if you come out here to the fool and the king of cups i feel like there is somebody for, for some of you definitely for some of you that there is somebody in the balance here that's, that knows you I feel like this is somebody who has deep feeling for you already. And if it's not that, there is definitely somebody in the balance who has been sort of, you know, waiting for you to change your mind or your ideas about what is possible in love. This is somebody who has an enormous amount of feeling for you. They want, they, you know, they want a new beginning of love, you know. They're waiting there manifesting you, you know. I, I kind of feel that this is somebody who is yeah you know this, this this is this is somebody who's obviously never told you how it is that they really feel about you they, this is somebody who lacks confidence in in some ways they they i feel this is a very sensitive individual very i feel this is a mature person maybe a bit older than you um you know emotionally evolved very very sensitive and really has struggles quite a lot to articulate feeling you know to tell you how does they really feel to I, I kind of feel that this is somebody who actually has a lot of like there's a femininity here as well you know like the masculine and the feminine is, is quite nicely balanced um and, and and the sensitivity on an emotional level is really acute you know like it's just it's very tuned into what's going on in a way where you might get an outward view of 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 them sort of you know kind of just brushing off a situation that you know calls for um some sort of emotional expression but you know this this underneath this person is like fully going there in terms of how they really feel this is a shy person yeah this is a shy person who has always been alone i feel like this is a person who has never really had a relationship where they've actually experienced love definitely older more mature and if it's not in age definitely there's a wisdom inner wisdom you know a wisdom of the heart most definitely this is somebody who's very well versed in feeling like they're articulate fully um expressive within themselves about what their th thoughts and feelings are from a heartfelt level yeah, I mean, this this is somebody who's going to make an amazing lover because it's, it's somebody who gets you. Gets you in terms of your physicality, gets you in terms of your emotional self, what, self and, 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 sorry, your emotional self, but also about what you're hiding from them, what your fears are. This is somebody who watches from afar, they absorb. You know, they're not... I think for you, you know, you're quite out there in some ways. You know what I mean? Like you're you know, charging ahead and... 
you're kind of a bit more sort of full steam ahead and in the in the moment maybe with just kind of like letting off steam um i think that's that's a big part of your process this is some this is somebody who would kind of like counterbalance that in a way where you know they just they, 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 there's a i don't want to say passive because that makes it sound a bit wishy-washy but it's almost like the energy is just yeah just 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 flows very gently you know and, and and i think that this is somebody who will actually really help you to kind of you know energetically come into some sort of a balanced state this is somebody who reads the signals very sensitive to you obviously lacks the confidence um but yeah i i felt that perhaps this could have been even a past relationship for some people um, I feel like this person, you know, is, is somebody who is either in the balance or it's a, a person who knows you or it's somebody who actually is or has been in a relationship with you already, definitely. Um, I want to come up to here to the Emperor and the Four of Cups. I felt this person will make a courageous move. This, this, I kind of feel that this person is actually coming into manifestation within this next three to four months. <clears throat> Excuse me. I felt that this was somebody who would actually reach out to you in a way where they'd actually put on a brave face. Like they'll have to pluck up some courage to, to, to kind of reach out to you. Um, but, I, but, I, but I felt that, you know, the place that you're actually in at this time, it's like, it's like you're not ready. You're, you're still closed down on this person in a way where you push it back. And it sent, and it sent, but I felt like it would send them reeling. You know, this person becomes quite dejected and, um, you know, maybe, maybe they'll actually do that. You know, maybe they'll actually reach out more than once, you know, like, like, like maybe it'll be a couple of times. And, you know, but, but I feel, felt that you would you would sort of push push back each time and it would be like a no that you weren't ready to actually be around anybody at this time i don't think that this person is going to give up you know the emperor very strong energy as well very ambitious knows what it wants coupled with the four of cups you know this knows what it wants emotionally you know and okay you you you, you you've rejected me but i'm not going to give up because i know how i really feel about you i've watched you from afar i've been waiting for this moment you're the person i kind of want to really you know Open the door into and to get to know. I want to, I, I, you know, I've got something to say here. I, I, I kind of want to hear you out. I want to see who you are. I want to understand what your, 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 your process is all about. I kind of, you know, like, I, like I'm really, like emotion. I'm really keen. I kind of feel, I can feel it. I really feel this. Um, and again, you said the Aries energy, you know, like, you know, sort of like, it's again, warrior energy. So it's kind of, it's not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take no for an answer, you know, like, so, and, and there's also a steadfastness there, you know, that kind of co-aligns with that ambition. It's like, I'm going to, you know, methodically almost, you know, push towards what it is that I want here. I felt like this person would up the game and step up to it as well. And, you know, it becomes more about a fight to win you over. And I actually think that that's what you need. <laughs> like, you actually need somebody to prove themselves to you. I think that's actually a part of what I feel like is a problem here. It's like, you test people out. You actually push people around. I think the things that you actually fear about what's going to happen to you are very much about what you do to other people. I don't want to sound horrible because I think sometimes it's just the way we do play things out on an unconscious level. I think at times you can be overbearing yourself. I think at times you can actually be really pushed. I think your energy is very testing. And I think it's all about trying to figure out what other people can handle, whether they can actually handle you. And so, 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 you know, you, you, you're kind of pushing back on them in a way that sort of says, how far can this go before it is that you, it's almost like you're, it's almost like you're trying to prove something. You know, maybe you're proving to yourself that, you know, you're not good enough. Or maybe you're proving, trying to prove to yourself that this person doesn't have what it's, it takes to be in a relationship with you. It's a constant sort of push, 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 push. And I feel that, you know, this person is, is, you know, is, is, is very sensitive and very shy, but at the same time, you know, because they're so articulate within themselves about what they know that they like in terms of, a, you know, like a, a relationship potential, you know, and they see so much in you in, 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 in terms of a future to get to know you. 
it's like by the time they get to that 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 point of actually sort of stepping up and saying here i am you know like let's you know go out on a date or you know have a drink or you know maybe go and grab a coffee or whatever it's going to be yeah the, 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 just the idea that they're bringing it in it into manifestation the idea of this potential into manifestation is such a huge thing it's like for them it's like there's no going back it's like i've, I've come this far you know like, i'm not, not going to let some kind of pushback on 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 you know this say say that you know to me that it's all over so if we come down here to strength and the ten of swords and i felt you know this is really good advice really because i think you know you're going to get to a point where it's a point of realization that you can't keep on playing it this way you know it's like your lack of faith is, is is actually what's really stopping you here, you know? You've got to give over. <clears throat> You've got to acknowledge that you actually have your own inner demons, yeah? Maybe you've been let down before um, in, in relationships. Maybe you're sensitive or, or, or vulnerable to other people hurting you. Um, <clears throat> and, and I feel maybe accumulatively over your life, you know, like it's actually just been a bit of a raw deal in terms of how things have rolled for you. Um, I kind of feel like you've come up quite hard. I think you've actually seen some very difficult situations in life that have caused caused you really to to to, to be very uh, yeah to the trust. I think trust is a real issue for you, and I think people challenge you when they want to get close to you, to get near to you. Whether again, whether that's intimate relationships or whether that's friends or even whether that's family. You know, I, I kind of feel like from a, maybe from a young age for you, you've actually really had to fend for yourself in a way where you've actually had to keep guarded. It's kind of like it's either me or it's going to be you. And I'd rather it actually be you than me because at the end of the day, I need to look after myself. But that's a lonely place, you know. Like you know, you know, you're not getting the the nurturing, the emotional development, and 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 you know, joy out of life because at the end of the day, you're not letting people in. It's you know, like you have to accept that you know whatever happened before you it, it is what it is i feel a big part of this you know when you look, when you look at strength strength is a healing card you know the ten of swords is such a desperate card in as much as i feel like you've been done over or, or that the situation has left you to feel like you've been done over whatever that means you know like I, I just i just feel like things will get to a point where it's like oh my god like this just never ends but at the same time i've got nothing to lose anymore you know and I think you need to find forgiveness for yourself, that you just need to accept yourself for who it is that you are and that this is your process and stop giving yourself such a hard time. You know, you need to trust within yourself that love is there, but you will find that in a way that goes according to your own, under your own steam, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's a, it doesn't have to be how, how other people do it. It has to be how, how you do it. It has to be right for you. A lot of this is about your individuality, about being the person that you actually are. I think also then you need to forgive what's happened before you. I think you need to forgive the people who have gone before you, the situations that have left you feeling the way that it is that has left you fe feeling. So acceptance is really very, you know, you're not bound by your past here. You know, you, at any point you can make a decision to kind of just open up. And, and, and you know, I kind of feel... From that point of view, you know, like it, it was so really like, like, you know, once you get to that point, it, it'll give the opportunity to detach from what's gone before you. And there you can you can start to rebuild yourself in some ways, you know, you know, which which, you know, releases energy, so much energy, which, you know, immediately will spike this vitality, new vitality that allows you to then engage with people in a way that becomes much more um honest really for you we've come up here to the hierophant and the two of cups i felt the future in terms of an outcome actually was a really amazing one because i feel that you actually will let this person in you will actually find a point where you could just be present and begin to accept the idea that there is love there for you you know the two of cups you know it's 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 about a soulmate connection as much as it is about accepting love and accepting a reciprocal flow you know, finding that person that you can finally become close with, intimate with. The recognition and acceptance of love. 
I felt, you know, and I'm going here with the Hierophant. I mean, this is it is the major card here in the tarot deck for love and commitment in terms of ceremony. You know, perhaps this is a person that you're actually going to not only fall in love with, but marry or move in together and become de facto and start putting, you know, both your names on the bills. You know, like building a life together that is really contractually obliged to, you know, I'm not going to say two becomes one because I don't think that that's what this is all about. I think it's, it's just, it's like, you know, the, the fear of, of, of making the commitment subsides. The acceptance of love in your life for the first time seeing somebody without that fear, you know, that lens of fear across your eyes, you know? It's about fully opening up and it's about a serious commitment of saying, you know, this, is, this person's the one. This is just the person I really want to be with. And it's a step forward to, to marriage, to a de facto relationship, to putting names on each other's, on, on your bills, etc. You know, I, I feel like I get to a point where it's like, you know, like it's a, it's a celebrate, like it's a celebration of love. You know, this person, I'm very strong. I feel like a very strong sexual identity here enormous amount of self-discipline very fiery spark that really i feel i feel from a like a, you know, like a sexual compatibility i think this is somebody who will actually really allow you to be yourself but also is somebody who has a bit of spark that won't always take no for an answer um very sensitive somebody who wants to take care of you you know like this I, I feel like there's some traditional values going on here as well you know so I mean, maybe for some of you this is a person who really wants to be a father you know the emperor is the father in tarot the king of cups you know, this is somebody who has the affection you know the 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 the, the, the emotional art articulation but but also the masculinity you know this is somebody who who tempers you who gets you um a very poetic person i felt you know quite well versed in the idea of the written words you know you know very 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 gentle in terms of words you know it says the right thing quite romantic you know knows how to woo you knows how to say things that actually make you feel special felt that this was somebody who was good with music i know it has a good taste in music but maybe also plays music um music's important to this person I felt that this was a very nurturing individual and I feel that this is actually heading in a very, a very, very, very positive direction. Look, I hope that's made some sense to you and if it has, feel free to leave some comments down below. It'd be great to get your feedback. Like and share this video where you can. Hit subscribe, tap on the bell icon, that'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. And if you're interested in the services that I offer you as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. Plenty of information about who it is that I am, what it is that I do, and how it is you can access my service as a psychic tarot reader. Thanks very much and take care. Hi everyone, welcome to card number two. This is your reading and we are looking at what is next in love. So let's jump in and have a look and see what's going on for you. I'm drawn over here to Temperance and the Six of Pentacles. I, I feel, you know, this is looking into the past and I feel, I feel like things have always been really complex for you when it comes to involvement at, um, at a relationship level. Oh, I felt... There's a there's a sense of other people leaning on you really hard. It's like there's a neediness that calls on you for for you to give sort of more than you really should be to these people. I, I, I get a feeling you're actually very sensitive to. Um, th there's empathy here. You know, like a really strong sense of empathy towards other people in a way that sees that they need healing perhaps, you know, that they, they need some help or assistance or support or, or some kind of leg up that helps them to get on their feet. I mean, maybe at times you see a diamond in the rough even, you know, where you sort of think, oh, this person has an enormous amount of potential and you, you can see what it is that they need to kind of get to where they need to be to be that person. And so I kind of, I kind of felt this idea of healing other people um, was was a really big thing, and it's almost like when these people get to a point where they're back up on their feet, 
It's like they, they don't need you, or if they do, they just, they become quite codependent on you, you know? Like, it's, it's, there's, again, this sense of neediness. Um, I felt that, that relationships, you know, where, where there's this tendency for you to be pulled back from what is it you're, you're wanting to achieve in life. Like, I feel like you have it in you to really be, Oh, I kind of feel like next level. Like, I just feel like there's a lot of achievements that you haven't sought out or been able to achieve because other people have pulled you back from being that person or doing that thing, you know? I feel like they're sucking on your resources. There's, there's this kind of like a, a feeling of vamp, vampire kind of, you know, um, you know, vamping you, vamping you of energy, vamping you of practical resources, whether that's money and security or just, you know, know-how, time, um, but I feel like you're a magnet for this kind of person. I feel like you're a magnet to, to kind of pull in people who are very needy of you and what it is that you actually have to get. I think you're, you're again, very sensitive person who actually really sees, um, through a very empathetic lens. You know, there's a, there's a lot of love and nurturing there. Um, I felt that if you come over here to the Empress and the Queen of Swords, I kind of feel like this actually says a lot more about that. It kind of, it's been more in the, more in the present moment. You know, the Empress is very much the, the sort of mother nurture, mother, mother Earth card, really. It's nurturing and, and, and giving, and, and she's very industri industrious in terms of its outcomes because it really wants to bring things to life. Um, but I kind of feel like the, 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 the mindset has changed to, to a large degree. If I look where you are right now, I think that you're really done with complex sexual situations, especially relationships that don't get you where you want to be or yeah, where, where, where the giving is just really one side. I think that's what I'm trying to say really is that there's a, a one sidedness here that, um, it, it kind of, it's all, it's all outgoing, you know, it's not flowing back into your world, into your life. It's not nurturing anything in, in you, you know? I wonder whether, you know, you just recently split up with somebody. Perhaps for some of you, there, there could be, you know, like a divorce. You know, I, I feel it. there's this fierce independence. Like you're standing on your own two feet. You're in your own power. I don't feel like you need a relationship right at the moment. I kind of feel that for many of you, you're kind of looking through this lens in a way. You're thinking, well, what's up ahead? Where's it all going? Um, is, is, is anything out there for me? But at the same time, I feel, I feel strength in you. I feel like you're very self-realized person in many ways, a very sophisticated and articulate from an intellectual point of view. Um, I think, you know, maybe even academically orientated, if not, to certainly very street smart and savvy in terms of being able to kind of size things up. I, I kind of feel there's a lot of power here, you know, like I feel a surety. I feel that you are an incredibly capable person. You know, you, you, I feel like you've come to a point where it's like you're saying to yourself, I don't need somebody else to complete me. Like I am complete. I am my own person. You know, I, I, I know what I'm about. I know what I'm capable of doing. I don't need anybody to pull me back anymore either. So maybe it's actually just a lot easier to be, be on my own. Um, I do feel, I feel, I do feel grief here. I have to say, I do feel grief. You know, Queen of Swords, very strong card for that idea of carrying, uh, you know, like a burden um, of, a, a head, of a heavy heart, you know, maybe there just hasn't been success in relationships in the way that you would hope they would have um, given you. There hasn't maybe been the prosperous or industrious or fruitful outcomes that actually give you a sense of fulfillment at an emotional level, it leaves you to feel quite isolated and alone. So, so there is a loneliness. I do feel a loneliness here, but at the same time, you're sort of saying, I'm okay with that. I can own that. Um... I feel like you've been around the block maybe more than once. You know, I, I feel like, you know, this, there's, there's a strong sense of maturity here. You know, this could be, if you're not old, uh, sorry, I don't mean to say old. If you're not older, you know, whatever maturity is in terms of age, I feel like you are mature for your years. Like, I feel like you're very grown up. And I feel perhaps that that's actually taken place from a very young age. You've had some experiences in life that have kind of wised you up to what people can be like. And I think people can be very hard on people at times through your mind. And I think that's why you are very sensitive to other people. And, you know, people who are maybe down and out or need a leg up or some kind of support in terms of, you know, giving something to them. I, I kind of feel like that's a part of maybe where this comes from. Um... But I think at the moment, you know, it's all about tough love with you. You know, you're kind of, you're sort of saying, you know what, talk to the hand. You know, I just don't need any more of this 
problematic, over, overly complex, codependent, um, draining experience. You know, like, you know, it's, it's just easy to be on my own. Um, I wonder whether for some of you, if you were divorced, whether you had children, you know, Empress is strong card for motherhood. I, I, I don't, I don't feel a maternal drive here. You know, the Queen of Swords is saying, I don't want that, cutting away from that. I'm okay to be on my own. But maybe it's also questioning, is there, is, is there children on the horizon for me in the future? You know, am I going to, and, I, and this other thing is like, am I going to be a spinster? You know, like, am I going to wind up just being alone all of my life? You know, I'm okay if that's actually what it's going to be, but you know, I don't necessarily know I, that I want to cancel out the idea of having kids. You know, what are my options? I kind of feel like you're at that point of saying, what are my options if I do want them? Yeah. Um, but the fierce independence, this comes through very strongly. I think the thing for you is that what also is really important is this idea of having somebody who can intellectually stimulate you. I think you are ahead of the game, you know, like I think you're... I think you're always a couple of paces ahead of everybody else. And when it comes to relationships, I think that you get bored very quickly as well. I, I, think, I think that's the thing. It's just like their neediness, their codependency, their, their, their I guess their, their, their drain on you is one thing. But, you know, like if you don't get that sophisticated engagement, you know, like I, I think that's sort of like a done deal for you. It's like it becomes really boring very quickly. And you have a tendency to chew them up and spit them out. So, you, so you're looking for something that is above and beyond anything that you've experienced before and to, looking to take it to next level. I, can I just also say, I think that's why the complex involvement with people who are a drain on you has actually been kind of successful, like in terms of falling into that type of arrangement, because I think that's the challenge, like that becomes a mental challenge for you. Yeah. Rather than the mental sort of, I, I guess, stimulation of the person, you know, in, in, in itself, if that makes sense. Um, coming up here to death and the four of swords, I feel like this is a person sitting in the balance who is on a timeline to run into your, I guess, into your timeline in terms of a meeting point as a start point for, a, you know, a next potential love situation. I felt that this person in the past have been going through a very difficult divorce or, or, or loss in terms of a relationship. Um, you know, I feel like there's been a, a very serious involvement there with this particular person. I feel like they've been grieving. This could also be the loss of somebody who they loved or who was near and dear to them in terms of that person passing over. I wish, I also wonder whether this person had been really unwell. I felt like there was recovery and some kind of like, you know, but that could just be like a mental and emotional thing, you know, but I, I do feel there's been an enormous amount of change in this person's world and that they've come to a point where they've kind of come through a grieving process and, and, and sort of, yeah, I, I, I feel like this person's been to the brink. I, f I feel like this person's, I feel like this is a real, like this is a realist. This is somebody who just says it how it is. A bit like you on that level. Um... I feel like this person may, maybe has actually seen death, like the you know, kind of seen the kind of parameters of death. Maybe they've had a, like a con confrontation with mortality within their own self. Like maybe they've actually faced death at some point. And, you know, it's kind of like an all or nothing situation. It's like, you know, like I've got nothing left to lose. You know, like I want to live life to its fullest as a consequence, you know. Um, I don't feel like this person reacts to things. You know, like there's, there's a really... Oh, well, like a very refreshing, um, what I want to say, what I want to say, the process is very calm, very beautiful, self-reflective process. You know, it doesn't need to sort of talk a lot. <laughs> doesn't need to, doesn't, it doesn't not, there's nothing dramatic about this person. It's drama free. Yeah. And largely I kind of feel like baggage free in some ways as well. I feel that they, you know, just kind of like, they, they kind of just go with the flow in a way where if there is an issue that arises, you know, they just... Sift it down into its essence. Into its ess I felt this was a, bit, a little bit spiritual, actually. Um, spiritual because they've seen the fragility of life. There's something poetic about this. I feel this person's just got like a very big process that has thought about the big picture, you know? And it's kind of spiritualized them in a way where it's like, you know what? 
there is a meaning to life. This person has substance, you know, like this person has grit. This person has been around the block as well and seen quite a lot in life. Um, you know, they know that life's not all roses. And at the end of the day, you have to enjoy it for what it is. And, and, and you know, there's a spiritual component as a consequence. And there's nothing, there's nothing flaky about them in terms of their character. Very grounded in real life experience. I felt there's a bit of a dark horse. Somebody who broods quite a lot, you know, they kind of, you know, there's a lot of quiet time thinking things through. But at the same time, full of surprises, because, you know, like they're, they're, they've got a big mindset, a big open mind that um, isn't compartmentalized into the sort of like a small world experience, you know. I also felt whether this, I also felt, also felt that this person could have lost everything at some point, you know, or seen that people have lost everything. I, I felt that this person had lost a lot, you know, maybe lost everything in business or lost everything in terms of their life and their, their investment into a relationship. Um, maybe lost fam, you know, lost family or been in a situation where they've just you know, kind of felt that, like I feel loss here, you know, there is, there is that sense of loss. Once again, it kind of, you know, it's, it's that sense of um, got nothing to lose essentially. Um, yeah, coming over here to the Fool and the Three of Wands, felt this is where this person is right now in terms of, you know, meeting you on your timeline. You know, it's kind of it's ready to let things go. You know, ready to let everything that's gone, all that stuff that I've just talked about in the past, it's like, yeah, okay, you know, maybe it's been a bit of a turbulent, difficult, challenging, life-changing experience. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just kind of want to lighten the load and, you know, I'm ready for life, you know, new beginnings. You know, I want to coast along in a way where... Don't get too bogged down by anything. No, I don't want any drama. Don't necessarily want to be tied down. Um, I don't want to be. I don't need to be. Um, I feel this person is coming into your world within around the space of one to three months. And I felt that this was an introduction by somebody. I felt that this was maybe like a matchmaking situation as well. Like a friend who introduces you to this person who's actually got you and them in mind. Thinking, ah, oh, good match. Um, I felt that when this person ends, I kind of feel like I just get this picture of them entering a room and it's like, it's like full impact, you know, like it's, it's, it's like, yeah, like there's this full on kind of, it's, it's almost like a big entrance, you know, like I feel like this, this person gives off a vibe of maybe just playing it a little bit too cool. Um... I think initially it's just, it's like, you know, not really looking for anything, not really interested in anything. Maybe comes comes across as a little bit blasé, even a little bit arrogant, you know. I, I just feel it's like, you know, every, they're thinking, you know, their, their vibe is kind of like water off of a duck's back. Nothing affects me. Nothing can touch me. I don't need anything. I don't need anybody. You know, like it's sort of... But at the same time, there is something very graceful and, and there's an air of... Um, what am I? What do I want to say here? Like, there's a there's this this like air of it's like an air of superiority, definitely. Like, and it's intriguing because it's like, why are they why are they thinking like that? I kind of feel on some on some levels, it's sort of that that it's it's quite hypnotic. Like, it actually pulls you in in a way where you where you are interested because you want to find out more about who this person is. Because I think you get the wrong idea to begin with. I think they give out the wrong impression. I don't think this is the person that you think that you would actually go for. But it kind of interests you because it's like, what are you all about? What's your story? Um, you've got nothing to lose. They've got nothing to lose. And I kind of feel that there are sort of, it's like a series of meetings. There's like one, two, three meetings where you're testing each other out, getting to know each other. I, I, I feel that through that process that you, you, you sort of validate quite a lot of qualities that you find resonate with you very strongly in terms of this person kind of needing their own space. Um, you know, wanting to avoid complexity in relationships in particular. Um, needing to be their own person in a way that kind of just, you, you know, they're not looking for validation. I think that's actually the strong thing that I, I feel here. And I felt that, that you're very much like that as well. I don't feel that you're somebody who needs to be validated by another person. And this person is definitely like that. And what, what's really refreshing about this 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 initial meeting is, is every day feels like a, 
like a new day with them. Like they, you don't get bored with this person. This is a very, very sharp individual, very intelligent. If I'm going to come over here to strength and the King of Swords, you know, very sharp. And very, I kind of feel like academic is, is you know, academia is, is a strong potential here. This could be a writer, a journalist, definitely a political mind, you know, very sort of savvy when it comes to local, global politics. They like they really have their stuff together. There's a there's a very strong maturity coming through. I feel like this person is older, um, or like you, older for their age. Like they, there's a strong sense of of kind of you know in, in intelligence and wisdom here. Very sharp. I felt like this is a really funny person, but but like but like it's a bit dark as well. You know, like it's witty and straight to the bone. It kind of go a bit dark. It's sophisticated. It's intelligent. It's well thought through. They don't talk just for the sake of talking either. You know, like so when they do say it, it kind of goes to the point. I felt like they were really beautifully spoken though. Um, the, the 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 image that I feel like, like that I get here of this person is. It's is that there is it's a dark horse. You know, there's, there's intrigue with this person. They're not telling you everything about who it is that they are. They don't want you to know everything who it is that they are. They they're actually quite private, and I feel like they've just got a lot of experience that makes you actually feel really safe when you're with this person. I feel like you know, like if they're in a relationship with you, it's like it's like you know, you 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 touch my lover, you touch my, my partner, you touch my family, you know, you, you, you're touching, you know, it's like you're touching me in a way where it's like, just be careful because you need to honor, you know, the people that I love, the people that I know. And I, and I feel that this person, it, there's a braveness there, a courageous, courageousness there that, you know, they wouldn't flinch to respond in a retaliative way that actually was very much about protecting you and protecting whatever you had together. Um, I, I, and from that point of view, I actually think they could be quite intimidating to other people if they got on the wrong side of them, because I think that there is a fierceness with this person, you know, like this isn't somebody that you mess about with. This is somebody who actually is very, is very clever. And if you did the wrong thing with this person, they would actually, they would actually get them. They, they would, I feel that they would be quite revengeful actually, you know, in a way that would even the score. So it's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth with this person. There's no doubt about that. Um, I also felt that the sort of se that sexual connection here was actually really amazing between the two of you because I think that this is, a, is an individual, it's not an obvious sexuality. Like, you know, a lot of people, it's a very much into sort of physical sexuality, you know, in, in a much more obvious way. This is not that person. This person is into the psychology of sexuality. You know, like this person undresses you with their mind. This this person is is somebody who has to keep it really interesting. They can't do the obvious, and it's, there, there's nothing boring about them when it comes to being in bed with them. You know, like this is somebody who has either thought it through beforehand or, or thinks on their feet while they're, they're sort of like in action, and it just but it's really sophisticated and um, unexpected. Yeah. This is somebody who will keep you on your toes. I've, and, I, and I feel that this is somebody who is very much meeting you as a match in terms of the psychology of what you're looking for. Um, I felt this was a professional person. I felt that they had, I, I felt that they had a lot of money. They, like this person has their stuff together. Yeah. Like they have, I, I, this could be somebody working in, 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 in finance or, or, or sort of, you know, corporate management or some sort of a role that has a savvy, industrious edge where they're taking the lead in a way that is all about success. This is not somebody who's just kind of going along for the ride. They're not there as anything else other than a player. Like this is somebody who is a, is a key player, somebody who wants to be the lead. This could be somebody who has their own business. Um, I felt like they had a lot of experience when it came to that. Maybe were very opportunistic when it came to... Um, to money and finance and to success in business or to working in a business at, at a high end, you know, we're talking sort of, you know, uh, you know top end in terms of management. I, I felt that this person didn't have any family, like, so no kids. Um, I, I definitely felt this could be somebody who was divorced or out of a relationship that had been very long term. Um, 
they wanted to be alone. They, they didn't, again, they didn't need to have a relationship just for the sake of having a relationship. Uh, you know, like this person's fully self-sufficient. They're standing in their own two, on, their, on their own two feet within their own right. And I do feel here, coming out to here, the justice and the nine of wands, I, feel, I felt that a big part for you was, you know, probably more in, 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 in advice, was, you know, it's, it's like, I think you need, you'll need to accept that you've met your match with this particular person and that it's okay to be in a relationship without that need to feel that you've got to be giving something all the time, okay? It's like, it's okay to just be in a relationship and free fall and to have an unconditional arrangement where you don't need to put out to, to, to kind of get out, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's, it's you know, because in the past, it's, you know, like, you've, you've reached very deep to, you know, in such a supportive way for other people. And, and, and I think that that's actually been a very beautiful thing. But I think at the same time, um, you know, like, you, you know, you're at a point in your life where you just kind of need to reset what what the basis is and what the parameters are in terms of your boundaries. You know, like, I feel I feel independence is a really important part of, of, of what you're all about. You know, um, you know not sacrificing um, that independence to become codependent within a relationship is, is, is ultimate for me. I feel that you can you can heal other people like you, like I feel that this person does need healing. You know, strength is a healing card. Yeah, temperance is also a healing card. By the way, when we're looking to the past with these other people, but I feel that this person does need some healing. But you can heal without having to give. You know, like you don't you don't have to intend that healing. You can just be yourself and allow the match of your personality and and that kind of unconditional connection to be everything that it needs to be to give some balance to this person. It's like, you can be you and this person can be them. And you don't, you don't, I don't feel like you have to be living together even. It's like, you know, it's okay to have a relationship and just to have your own space. Um, I feel like you're both strong enough to stand alone or together. And that if you're together, you're still, you're still individuals. You're not going to get lost in this idea that we need to be uh, soulmates. Twin flames. Um, you like for you guys. For you guys, it kind of almost feel like that. That concept is too, like it's too. It's like it's almost a bit immature for the both of you. And because also you're realists, it's like you know what. At the end of the day, I'm just great grateful to have you in my life. Let's just take the moment, just to you know, like to, to appreciate the moment. It is what it is. There's no attachment to it. You know, there's no attachment to to it being something that it's not, or being something that. Um, so it takes away from the moment is what I'm trying to say. I felt that this person was, travel was really important to you with this particular person. I felt that, they, that you would actually see the world with them. I felt like travel, it was going to be really important and in that it would actually open up the world for you. I, f I feel that this person can help you to step up, to raise up, to lift your game in, in areas that you hadn't anticipated. Whether that's about money, travel, professional success. I, I kind of feel like this person has a lot to show you. Um, what else do I want to say here? Yeah, I, I feel like that's it. I feel like I could say a lot more about this because it's actually very interesting. I think that at the end of the day, this is somebody who will actually stimulate you from an intellectual point of view to no end. And, 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 and I feel that you're a perfect match on that particular level. You know, it can be whatever it's going to be, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, I think what I'm, what I'm taking from this, you know, in terms of its essence is that you don't have, you, you don't have to lose yourself into this person, Yeah. I hope this reading has made some sense and if it has, feel free to leave some comments down below. It'd be great to get your feedback. Like and share this video where you can. Hit subscribe, tap on the bell icon. That'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. And if you're interested in the services that I offer as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. Plenty of info about who it is that I am, what it is that I do, and how does it can access my service as a psychic tarot reader. Thanks very much and take care.
Hi everyone, welcome to card number three. This is your reading and we are looking at what's happening next in love. So let's jump in and have a look and see what's going on. I'm going to start down here with the High Priestess and the Five of Pentacles. You know, I didn't feel like you're in the best of places at the moment. Um, I feel like a lot of negativity in terms of projecting into a future where you can't see yourself being with somebody. And if you did, you know, can you rely on that person in a way where they're going to be there for you? And I feel like a lot of insecurity here. Feeling like you're really out of your depth, unable to really grasp a clear idea as to how this is going to work and whether it's actually really going to work for you in a way where it actually gives you an outcome. Um, in some ways, I feel for some of you, perhaps you've actually given up on the idea of, of finding love in the future, giving up hope, losing faith. And thinking and feeling the worst about what's going to happen. You know, it's just a sense of isolation, of being alone in a place that, in a, that, like at the moment, it's not a great place. I don't feel like it's a great place for you right now. I think you're looking for signs. You know, I think you are putting it out there in a way, you know, hoping to figure out whether it's all going to be good. I and mean, that's why you'd be having a reading right now. But it's more than that. You know, like, it's just really trying to... Because you know, I think the thing is, everybody else seems to have it, and you don't. I, I kind of feel like it's it's an all-or-nothing situation for you at this point in time. Can I ever truly rely on everybody? That's the other thing. It's, just, it's kind of like a... Almost like a loss of faith in people, and whether you can be reliant on them in a way where they're going to give you the support that you need. I think there's also a lot of worry around money, and finan so financial security and material security for the future. I wonder whether for some of you, whether things were just like, oh, like maybe a little bit soupy, a little bit, yeah, like a little bit um, difficult to get a grab on in terms of where your security is at right now. Maybe for some of you, you're struggling a little bit financially. Maybe security isn't, you know, in the best place right now for you. You know, and that kind of compounds this idea of, of a future wanting to be with somebody in a relationship, not just because you want to be in love, but also because... You know, join forces and resources together and, you know, have a good life where you can actually, you know, basically survive in a way where you're comfortable. That's a very sort of, you know, real grab on what a relationship's all about. It's not just love. Um, so there's lots going on there in terms of projection and feeling and worry and it's all also it's, so it's and, and it's, it's multifaceted. It's not just about love. It's about security. Um, you know, so there's 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 quite a lot going on here. If I look to the past strength, the seven pentacles, I feel like there's been somebody that you've actually been watching on with to do. Like I feel like there's somebody at a close distance, like it could be a friend, somebody who you've been really interested in. That's Mm, it's, it's like, how, I want to take it to the next level. I, I want it to be more than platonic is what it feels like to me. I feel like you've really put a lot of time and effort into this person over a very long period of time. And I feel like you've had a good relationship in terms of maybe something that's a little bit more, again, platonic. Um, I think that you've really felt very positive about them and you put a lot into them in a way where you've perhaps hoped that there was some kind of potential to take it to the next level. I think for you, it's like an all or nothing situation. Like your, your view is like, either I'm all in or I'm all out. I think it's quite extreme. Like it either feels really favorable and full of potential and this is all gonna work, or it feels like, you know, quite desperate and dismal and that it's never gonna happen. Like it's, it's sort of a, a very black and white situation, you know? But I do feel that this person has been very positive in terms of their influence upon you. I think that either way, you've just been happy to maintain a position of, you know, appreciating what it is you have with this friend or colleague or, you know, whoever this is. I kind, of, I kind of feel that, you know, like it's been a very healthy situation. Like, I don't feel that you've actually crossed a boundary that infringes upon their sensibilities as far as, you know, going into a place where you shouldn't. But having said that, I feel perhaps if, you, if you've made a sign or a show of what is it you would actually like in terms of taking it, you know, a step further. I'm going to come up here to the hangman and the page of pentacles. And I felt this reflected the person that we're talking about. I feel that this person is actually a really like a lot like you. 
Um, I feel like this person has very clear boundaries, though. They're quite sort of nuts and bolts, you know, like sort of very factual. Maybe a little bit, um, maybe a little bit geeky. Maybe a gamer into computers, into study, maybe studying at this point in time, or I kind of feel like this is a very studious individual that's very focused on what's in front of them in a very practical way. You know, this is somebody who's hands-on, very physical on that level of just kind of, you know, what am I trying to say there? I think that for, for me, it's black and white and very predictable is what I feel. I feel this is a safe bet, this person. This is somebody who isn't threatening, who doesn't throw you a curveball. You kind of know what you're getting. It's all packaged up. I feel like this is per a person that you would actually say, oh, I could take this home to my family to meet my mother. My mother would like this person. This person wouldn't offend anybody. I feel that they're cute, but they're not sexy. Um, there's an immaturity here as well for me. I feel that this person has a high degree of... Yeah, I, I, it's, it's a kind of, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of very, what it is, it's very fixed and narrow. It's, it's like, again, it's what's in front of me. And I'm working with what's in front of me. And what is in front of me, it's, it's black and white. It's nuts and bolts. It's no frills. It's not going to scare me. You know, like it's, 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 it's playing safe. And I like that. I really do like that. But I feel that this person has responded to you in some way in, in, in terms of maybe your advance your advancement to them. I don't feel that you've done anything that warrants any sort of, um, you know, harsh response. I think maybe you've actually just shown interest, but they've made it very clear. I feel like they've made it very clear to you that they're not interested on that level. You know, the hangman pulls back and says, stop, I've got a boundary. I'm not prepared to go further. I can't make that sacrifice. And also I feel like this person is preoccupied with other things. It could be study, it could be work. Could be could be anything, but I, I just kind of feel it's like you know what you know that's that's not where I am at the moment. That's not the kind of place that I'm I'm, I'm looking at. I feel like this person is also looking at finances and money, and I wonder whether that actually had a very strong influence for you in terms of you know feeling oh this person is safe, you know they're secure, they're very practical in terms of thinking about where the money is going to go, you know putting money in the bank perhaps, looking to get ahead. I just feel that like this person's a little bit sheltered, is what I'm trying to say. Um. But I understand why this person appeals in terms of the safety and the security. And also, I, I feel this is a very honest person. You know where you're at with this person. Um, I don't feel out of my depth in any way. I, I, I kind of feel very, I feel very safe. You know, I, I kind of feel this person, you know, it's going to have my back in a, in a really friendly way. I feel, but this feels like a friend to me. You know, it doesn't feel like a lover. So... Where's it all going? You know, like, what's up next? Because I do feel like something is about to change for you. You know, like, sort of, like, turn the corner. In the very near distant future, like, I'm talking the next two months, right? I feel, you know, up here with the world and the page of wands, which kind of corresponds to your timeline right now. There's a person that's just weighing the balance. <clears throat> Looking for new horizons. You know, putting it out there in a way that says, <clears throat> I really have a relationship with somebody. This is somebody who is full of surprises. I kind of feel that you'll meet this person in a surprise meeting context, you know? Bumping the, into them in the middle of the street or at the supermarket or a chance introduction via a friend of a friend. You know, like it's just, I kind of feel when you're least expecting it, this person just pops out, pops up and... It's very attractive in terms of their energy. I love the energy of this person. I feel there's an enthusiasm here, you know, a, a very liberated, very fast, positive individual who sees enormous potential. This is a real can-do individual. I feel like this is an open-minded person who has an enormously inquisitive soul. Um, I get energetic. I also get very young. Now, if it's not a young person, it's definitely somebody who's young at heart. I just feel that this is somebody who is looking for new experiences and loves a challenge, okay? I feel that that's actually already throwing up some red flags for you. Like, that, for me, that kind of, like, after everything I've sort of looked at, I kind of think, oh, I can see that this is kind of going to go one of two ways, really. But I think that they're also very career orientated. You know, Page of Wands is a really strong career card looking for, 
new dimensions, new avenues, new ways of doing things, looking looking, looking further afield from what is it's in front of. It's kind of the, the absolute opposite. It's the antithesis, an antithesis, <laughs> I'll say that quickly, the antithesis of the person that you've known before. This person is like the flip side of that. It's like this is somebody who's actually looking for action, who's wanting to have new experiences that challenge them, who's looking at life in a way where they're taking a chance. They're throwing their hat into the ring and saying, put me down, you know, like, I'll, I'll give it a go. I feel like this person is somebody who would try anything once. Strong vitality, very strong sexuality as well. Like, you know, like I kind of feel this is a, a person who has a vibrancy, you know, like a very high energetic output who is, once again, enthusiastic, outgoing, tries anything once, you know? It's, it feels really frisky to me feels very young in terms of its energy. It just kind of feels motivated and I like it. Um, it's the, it's the liberated aspect that really gets me, you know, like this is, this is somebody who, who is not fixed, who actually is very open-minded and wants to try new things. Um, I felt this was somebody who was definitely very fixed on their career at this point in time, really out to prove themselves in terms of what they're capable of doing. I felt that they travelled a lot. They could travel with work. Work could take them abroad or to different locations within the country that you're in. Um, and I think very quickly, this person's going to make it known that they're very interested in you and they can see this potential of where it'll all go in terms of a possible relationship leading into love. And I come down here to the Emperor and the Four of Swords. I mean, like immediately, it kind of comes back to you in a way where it's like, oh gosh, I'm just really uncertain about what this, this is all about. Um, I don't feel fully over what's happened in the past. You know, got the Four of Swords here that's you know, still reflecting and sifting down all the issues that happened in the past with this other person. I kind of feel that you're not sort of fully over this person. I feel like there's a high degree of resistance here to this new person that comes on board. It's new, it's confronting, it's different. It's not what you've expected. And you're really not sure whether it's actually what you want. And here with the Emperor, you know, the Emperor is actually quite a strong card in terms of boundaries. It definitely is a card that shows a, a high degree of conservatism, yeah? It's like, it's like this, this is not somebody, somebody or something that I know. It's an unknown quantity. I'm going to have to really think about this. So I kind of feel like, you know, this does not fit in any way, shape or form with your expectations and that you don't feel that you're over with this person from the past. This person to you is going to feel really unpredictable. It's like, oh God, no, I just, that's too much. Way too much for me. But what I find really interesting about this situation is that if you actually look at the Four of Swords, which, you know, the swords always say look to the past because they are about the past. When you go back to the past, you put so much time and effort into this other person. This person has absorbed your focus. Your ability to try and manifest something with them has not come to fruition, which begs the question, you know, it's time to think outside of the box. You know, at the end of the day, you know, you've, you've, you've gone with low risk and you've gone with a situation that is safe and secure and it hasn't actually gotten you anywhere. You know, it's actually taken all of your time, all of your effort and led you to feel actually quite absorbed in a way where it sort of spat you out the other end, leaving you feel absolutely... I kind of feel, you know, like I don't, maybe distraught is, 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 is distraught the wrong word or the right word? I, I do feel distraught, actually. I kind of feel like, you know, it's, 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 it's drained you of everything. Like you've given so much into a situation that has given absolutely nothing back to you. You know, like it's, it's, it's not fed you anything because this person's not interested. This person doesn't want to go there. And it's really hard to take that. But then all of a sudden, you meet somebody who's completely the opposite in every way, shape and form. And that's really confronting. But at the same time, this person is really into you. And they're really into you because they see an enormous amount of potential in who it is you are and what is it you're all about. You know, I think it might beg the question for you as to, is, is it, I, and I kind of feel this could be an issue. Is it like, is this somebody I could actually take home to meet the family or who I could actually introduce to my friends or 
you know, would, 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 what would my colleagues think if I actually started seeing this person? I kind of feel that that's actually a bit, a bit of an issue here for you. Justice and the Ten of Pentacles. Justice is about balancing things up, weighing things up. Ten of Pentacles is all about um, strings that come attached with connections to people. You know, it's what people think of us. I think, you know, for you, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, like at the end of the day, I really, I, this could be a deal breaker for me. I, I just don't know whether this person's going to fit into the kind of vibe that, you know, I'm into as far as my social connections are concerned. My family, my friends, etc. I think, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like you're becoming really fixed on it being all or nothing again. Looking for a way to kind of, I, I guess, pinpoint your thoughts, your feelings as to where it's all going, how it's all going, why it's all, like, it's, it's, for me, I kind of feel like there's a lack of openness there. It's kind of very fixed on having to be a, a very particular way, you know? I wonder if you also think whether this person might not give you the security that you might need in the future, you know? Um, I felt really strongly here, like there's a really long courtship though. I felt that this person wouldn't give up, that they're actually gonna really pursue you. But they have something to show you and they wanna show you what they're made of, you know? They kind of really wanna open up your experience, open up your world, open up your mind to let them in really. And I felt, a very sort of solid 10 month period of getting to know this person in a way where it would actually get to a point where you actually have to make the decision. It's crunch time. It's like, am I going to bring this person out to meet my friends? Am I going to take this person home to meet my family? You know, like at some point you actually have to make a decision to get on with it or to let it all go. And I felt I felt really strong here in terms of advice. It's like, it's like where is this going? Because, you know, it's not about lowering, lowering your standards so much as it is about being more flexible to what is possible with somebody. I, I kind of feel that, you know, for you, you're kind of like an all or nothing person. And if it doesn't live up to some kind of set expectation, some fixed way of thinking, that doesn't, doesn't sort of like fit into a box, that perhaps that's just not something that you're prepared to take a risk on. That it's just it just seems to you that, you know, you'd rather take the safer option. And getting the safer option isn't, the, is, is, isn't really going to give you the fulfillment that you're looking for, is what I'm trying to say. I feel that you need to be open to all sorts of experiences. And I think, first of all, you really need to start projecting more positively into the future in terms of what you are going to experience as far as a relationship is concerned. Love is just, a, you know, the potential for love is just around the corner. But you need to open up and start thinking about this in a way that really lets go of this very fixed idea as to how it's supposed to roll. Listen, I hope this reading has made some sense to you. And if it has, feel free to leave some comments down below. It'd be great to get your feedback. Like and share this video where you can. Hit subscribe, tap on the bell icon. That'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. And if you're interested in the services that I offer as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. Plenty of information about who it is that I am, what it is that I do, and how it is you can access my service as a psychic tarot reader. Thanks very much and take care. Hi everyone, welcome to card number four. Here is your reading and we are looking at what is next in love. So let's jump on in and have a look and see what's going on with the cards that are here before us. I'm gonna start down here with the chariot and the seven of swords. You know, there's like a feeling of being derailed. Um, that some kind of a process has been stopped. It's like it kind of almost feels like it's jaw dropping. It's like something's happened that's kind of like knocked you off your feet in some way, taking the wind out of you. You know, it was all going along really smoothly and powering ahead towards some kind of aim that you wanted to have success of, definitely. Um, I feel like, you, you you know, there's been like a sudden jolt that's just kind of stopped whatever it was that was happening from going ahead. Um, I feel like something's been hijacked. Um, you know, if I come over here to the Hierophant and the Two of Pentacles, I felt... I felt like you were actually with somebody in the past here. I felt that you met somebody who actually you were just totally co-aligned with in a very 
mm, lots of lots of reflecting going on here, lots of mirroring. I kind of feel like there's a lot in common. It's a very deep connection at a very soulmate level. I, I, I kind of feel like you've been orbiting each other's world in a way where you've just agreed on everything, you know, like it's, it's, it's lots in common. Um, but it's kind of, you know, the, the two the two of pentacles is coupled with the hyphen and the hyphen is like, you know, like it's, you know, it's all about church bells and making major commitments and, you know, so w whether that's actually about getting married or moving in together, having some sort of a de facto relationship, you know, this kind of felt like it was really serious. You know, perhaps you were engaged. If you weren't engaged, if you weren't married, you know, maybe there was the person who you thought was going to be the one that you could actually think, oh, you know, this is somebody I'd really settle down with. Maybe you were looking to move in together and start to, starting to share things like resources. You know, Two of Pentacles is all about sharing and caring and balancing things out in terms of a major commitment. I think that you've been really besotted with each other. And I don't feel that this was kind of a, a flippant fly-by-night scenario. You know, there kind of feel like there's, it feels like there's quite a lot of water under the bridge here. I feel, I feel like this could be a number of years in terms of its making. And if it's not that, it definitely feels like this person was the right one. You know, like you just trusted them. You know, they trusted you. You had the same things in common. You were all guns blazing to make this commitment and kind of, you know, trying to figure things out in terms of what that meant. <clears throat> perhaps families had met each other. You know, I, I feel like lots of things are crossed over here. Um, friends and social circles have been introduced. You know, you've gotten to know each other in, 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 in some ways, but you've also gotten to know each other's lives on lots of different levels, you know? So it's kind of multifaceted in that, in that respect. I think finances have also been a major thing, you know, looking to sort of balance things out in terms of financial investment, looking at the potential of coming together and combining resources, looking at what you can do, you know, as, as, as like as a power couple, you know, like when I say that, it's like, you know, you're, you're combining resources that give you much more buying power, maybe looking to buy a house or planning ahead that actually, you know, in, in, in a way that just, you know, really forecasts some great potential in terms of what is you can achieve together. I felt... I felt like coming up here to Judgment and the Ten of Wands, I feel like this other person that you had been seeing started to lose momentum in some way. I feel like they've become very preoccupied, and we're still talking about the past here. I feel like they've become very preoccupied with work and other kinds of responsibilities. Um, I feel like it's, it was also like it's become really difficult, had become really difficult to pin them down to see sort of where things were at. You know, the pressure has really started to mount on this person in a way where I feel that they begin to avoid crunching, you know, timelines with you. You know, um, it's, it's, it's as though they've become very hard to pin down as to where things are at as a whole. You know, it's like, OK, you know, like I thought we we're on board together in a way where it was all barreling towards this successful outcome of us becoming a thing. And all of a sudden... You have started to lose momentum. You seem to be very preoccupied with other responsibilities. So I'm kind of just going to start to press in a little bit to figure out where things are. And it's like, all of a sudden, this person doesn't respond in the same way. <clears throat> it's as though they are still starting to derail the process by making it all about them. And when they make it all about them, it's about everything that they have to do that is a responsibility that detracts from what's going on between the two of you. And the pressure has begun to mount and they begin to begun to avoid thrashing it out with you in a way that is facing it head on, yeah? It's like they're burying their head in the sand and you try to pin them down. It's like, and they won't listen or they won't act on certain things. You know, I kind of feel this person has been really at the wire. Maybe a lot of pressure with work or a lot of pressure with other responsibilities that have really called on them to step up and make good in a way that, um, you know, fulfills what it is that they've actually set out to do in the first place. They've had other things. They've, they, 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 they've, they have been distracted. They, they, they have com been completely distract distracted. But, you know, judgment, it's, you know, like it's really trying to pin things down to, to the kind of the centre of what's going on. And I don't feel that they've actually faced you in a way that has let, let these other things go and given you a fair hearing as to, you know, uh, maybe what some of your grievances have been, grievances have been about. Coming over here to the Sun and the Queen of Wands. And I feel 
More recently, this person has begun to back down in a way where they're almost sort of saying, look, you know, I, I just don't know if I can make this major commitment right now. You know, I kind of just want to, I just don't, I just don't know that if it's right for me just now, you know? Um, it's coupled, see, it's the Queen of Wands is coupled with the Sun, and the Sun is a really strong card around children. There's quite a few children cards in here. You've got the Empress, who's also got the Queen of Cups, these are really sort of very nurturing cards. The kind of commitment that I feel that you're actually looking to make previously was one where it was, you know, really going into that kind of full-fledged arrangement of, of, of settling down. So for some of you, this could be about having kids. You know, like maybe this person has actually backed off on the idea of having kids. Maybe this person has backed off on the idea of, of taking the, relation to the to relationship to the next level that actually fulfills some of that criteria. I feel that they just, this person's wanted to lighten things up a little bit, not to go so hard at this idea of being together and making this, this kind of commitment. I also wonder whether this person has been making sounds of relocation, maybe wanting to move to a different area, maybe wanting to look for a different job, or maybe looking at a job that's located in some other place, you know? Um, maybe they've been looking at the idea of travel. I just got, got, got a feeling that, you know, that it's, it's like, the distraction that was going on before has turned into something that's more about redefining their life path according to them as opposed to the both of you. It's like, you know, you're kind of like, I just, I just need, I need some time out just to kind of figure out where it's all going. What is, what is it that I really want to be doing at a professional level? Um, I don't need all of this pressure just right now. I just kind of need to look after myself in a way where I kind of find a bit of happiness because I feel like I've been sort of really snowed under. You know, I just, I, I just don't need this right now. So they've begun to back down. They want less pressure. I think, you know, maybe through your eyes, so you're seeing that as they've lost steam, um, that they're not, they're not powering ahead with it like they were before. I don't know that this person has actually lost steam, but I think that they sort of want to resolve something within themselves that <clears throat> maybe you're not quite getting. Uh, I kind of feel that that's perhaps what, what that's about. Either way, coming back down here to the Chariot and the Seven of Swords, I just feel that you've gotten to a point now where you've begun to weed through a lot of the issues that have arisen from this situation and you're sort of saying, you're saying to yourself, I just, I kind of, I, I've seen a side, to, side of this person that I don't know if I really like. You know, um, it's become, like, this is becoming a big hassle for me. I, and, I, and I feel in some ways you've actually you like, talked to the hand, you know, like at the end of the day, you're on your own here. I can't deal with this. You know, trust has become an issue. And um, this is this has really upset me in terms of what I thought we were actually working towards. And if you're not on board with this, then you're not the person that I thought you were. So I kind of feel like you've left. I feel like you've actually done an about face and you've kind of gone in a very different direction. You've cha changed the whole sort of trajectory, really, of your life. And you've left this person in, in, in like a, you know, sort of like a, I guess like a cloud of dust as you've sitting there, you've set off very quickly on, on, on your own way. So you didn't know what was hitting you when it all happened, but now this person doesn't know what's hit, hitting them. And maybe you've begun to look at the idea of another relationship, you know, potential in terms of where that's all going to go. What's next in love? You know, like, am I going to find somebody else? Or is it going to be this person? You know, um... I think at the moment, I think that you're still reeling from what's going on in a way where you're just trying to fi find <clears throat> find your bearings. I get that you're a very headstrong person. I get you're, you're very... Um, I, I, I get that once you make your mind up on something, you don't let it go. You know, like you're an all or nothing person when it comes to success. It's like, you know, once you've figured out what is it you want, you know, that's it. Nothing's going to stop me. And so for somebody else to sort of, you know, take away your power to be able to achieve what it is it you wanted to do, I think that that's been a real affrontment to you. I think you're quite methodical and paced in as much as when, you, when, you're, when you're heading in the, heading in the right direction of moving towards what it is that you want, it's just a matter of process, really. But as soon as something gives you, uh, you know, like something, as soon as somebody, somebody or something throws you a bit of a curveball, that can be a really upsetting situation for you because perhaps that, um, yeah, it sort of frightens you that it might not actually give you what it is you actually want in terms of, you know, success. When I come up here to the Hangman and the Queen of Cups, 
you know, I don't feel that it's about meeting somebody else. I don't feel that. I feel that the timeline of the person that you were seeing, have been seeing, is still very co-aligned to yours in a way where I feel that this other person needs more time. You're a very sensitive individual deep down. I think there's something very creative about their nature. I, I get a very artistic person who hasn't got an outlet. But a lot more to the past in terms of what they've been doing, what's been going on for them professionally speaking. I just don't feel that, that, that this is really what they wanted to do or where they've been really, I, I, I guess, um, able to, to figure themselves out as a person, you know? Um, and I think they've become a bit disillusioned about where it's all going for them at a much more personal, professional level. I feel that this person needs more time, but I think in time that they will actually find their heart in a way that helps them to resolve what it is that they need to do to give you what you want, you know? Um, I, I kind of feel that this person will be prepared to make the sacrifices that actually give you fulfilling mutual happiness, right? You know, Queen of Cups is right right up there on the order of love. You know, this is somebody who's very tender towards you, has a very compassionate understanding of life and people. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> there's a hugely nurturing quality in there as well. If for some of you, this was a, a, about this person stepping away from the idea of having children, I kind of feel that this person is, you know, going to get to a point where they realize that they love you. They want to be with you and they really want to settle down. And there is a nurturing instinct there that just by nature, okay, will unfold very naturally, but that they know that they also need to make a sacrifice to give you what it is that you want. And I feel, I feel that this realization of a fuller love for you through this process actually helps them to figure out themselves in some ways, that they need to make some personal changes that actually give them an outlet in terms of their, their self-expression and creativity. You know, a, a, a big part of this is about their personal time to reflect. And I think they've been saying this all the way through is like, I need more time. I need just to kind of lessen the load, you know, lessen the pressure. I've had a lot on. I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of feeling really like, like everything's boiling over. You know, like I feel, I feel, I'm just, I'm just not, I'm not feeling it. Like I'm not feeling what we're supposed to be doing here. I know that we said that, that we're going to do all of this, but it's just like, I just, I can't see the wood for the trees at the moment. The only way I know how to get to a place that actually gives me a greater understanding of what's going on is just to kind of, you know, lighten it all up and, you know, take away all of these factors so that I can begin to find a bit of happiness, really. You know, I think this is this person right at this person point in time is, is, is trying to find the happiness within themselves. They've lost sight of that. This is less about you and them, it's actually more about them. And I think that that's actually the difficult thing is because you're quite a headstrong person. You're, you're used to pushing things along in a way where you've got control. And all of a sudden this person's taken the control away from you, right? I think this person also needs to work through some deeper desires, you know? Um, deeper desires about maybe what they want in the relationship. Maybe they've just been going through things methodically, um, according to plan, based on what is it you want largely. Um, maybe they need to bring a part of themselves to the to, to the table, bring a part of themselves to the picture here that actually says, I need to infuse a bit of me into this and, you know, uh, you know, share more about what's going on, you know, rather than just hand it all over to you to kind of fulfill and, and to successfully, I, I, I guess, bridge over to an outcome that gives you both what you want. Maybe, maybe this person, you know, they needs to actually figure themselves out in a way where they can contribute to the trajectory of all, all of this, if that makes sense. I feel that this is a, a you know a really devoted person who wants to who wants who doesn't want to lose you or let go of you. And I feel that it will actually get to a point where they're going to really communicate that. But you need to allow look, I think that, that for me, the, the 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 advice in this is really important because I, I feel that what's going to happen for you is that it's like you're going to need the test of time to be able to give you the confidence that this person's still there for you in a way where they love you, but where you can also rely on them, you know, because you've got that methodical approach. But you need to be patient here about how this is actually developing in terms of the relationship, about your ideas of potentially having children, if, if some of you were having going to have kids. I, I just kind of feel it's about recognising that this 
relationship is a, like it's a sure bet in terms of the investment towards the future on so many different levels whether that's the emotional relationship with this person or whether that's about the practical nature of investing together and getting certain outcomes that give you security in the future i think that these are all wrapped up in the same thing you know by allowing this person to have their process by allowing this person to take a step back and to to lighten the load you know, it, you know, it's a show of patience that they really need to see because they, they just don't need that pressure right at the moment. And I feel that prosperous and abundant outcomes through, through, through patience is what this is all about, right? Stopping and slowing down to smell the coffee, to smell the roses is, is, is another aspect of this. You know, I just, you know, like slowing down to, I think it's also about finding the sensuality in, in, in the relationship as well. You know, like it's kind of like reigniting the flame. You know what I'm saying? It's like at the moment, I think that you're, heading in the complete opposite direction of looking for, for somebody else <laughs> or, or something else. I kind of feel like you've given up on this person. You know, it's just become too much hard work. Your headstrong nature is just kind of going, not, 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 not going to take this on. Too much work, too much hassle. But that's your head speaking. And I think it takes you a lot to slow down that momentum of, of, of thinking it was going in one particular direction and having to kind of accept that this is actually where it is. It's not somewhere else. I think that that's actually quite difficult. But if you look back to the past again, the past is the reality is, is you two have this amazing soulmate relationship that's all about commitment. You know, you can't just give up on that. You know, like in, in, in the first instance, what you had is what you still have today and what you can have in the future if you make a choice to do that. So it's about softening down and being a little bit more flexible in terms of what this other person wants and needs at this particular time. And if you can do that, you'll actually get a really amazing outcome in terms of love and a commitment for the future that gives you everything that you want in terms of security. And if it was about kids, definitely about having children. Look, I hope this reading has made some sense to you. And if it has, feel free to leave some comments down below. It'd be great to get your feedback. Like and share this video where you can. Hit subscribe, tap on the bell icon. That'll give you notifications for any future readings that I post. And if you're interested in the services that I offer as a psychic tarot reader, you can go to www.tonyfoxtarot.com. There's plenty of information about who it is that I am, what it is that I do, and how it is you can access my service as a psychic tarot reader. Thanks very much and take care.